Maybe. Sorry, folks. Just trying to get this adjusted. Tell a photo ain't playing nice. Yeah, they're trying to get me in it too. Do it this way. Maybe a little more turbine guy here. No one else yet, so it don't really matter. I'm gonna have to fix this after a bit. God damn it. Hands just aren't working right. Give me a second. There we go. I guess we'll just zoom in on the uh TV today. I have to worry too much about seeing me, I guess. Because what we're going to be talking about, as you can see, is a plaintiff's memorandum of law in support of the motion for temporary injunction. Sorry. All right, folks. Turbine guy here. I'm not even talking into that. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to run through the temporary injunction. Took a little bit of time thinking about how I wanted to approach this because there's two different complaints or whatever sent. There's one for this temporary injunction and one there's a public nuisance, civil public nuisance. So I'm going to go over the first one today, which as you can see is a plaintiff's memorandum of law in support of the motion for a temporary injunction. Now, see right on top here, 27 CV 22 1089. Filed on 125. 125 being, well, let's see, a week ago today. Now, I know that Paul didn't get it until Saturday. So, this is Coney Hennepin. Versus Paul Bergquist, Benjamin Field Wilson, and Superior Dreams LLC. They're the defendants. Once again, plaintiff's, plaintiff's memorandum of law in support of motion for a temporary injunction. Introduction. This case involves a dangerous public nuisance created by defendants on approximately December 15th when defendants brought their yacht named C-Note, approximately 58 feet in length and 45 tons in weight, onto Lake Minnetonka boat access owned by plaintiff Hennepin County, located at 4141 Shore Road Drive, Spring Park, blah, blah, blah. The V-shaped hull, hull, hull of the yacht has been resting on a flatbed trailer not designed to transport the yacht and is currently positioned on the slope parking lot of the access of the roughly 15 braces, partially supporting the weight of the yacht. Approximately 10 are bent. In addition, the yacht contains 200 gallons of diesel fuel. The yacht has remained at the access despite repeated requests by Hennepin County to defendants to secure the yacht to a proper trailer and move the yacht from the access to a safe location. In the opinion of the Hennepin County Sheriff's Office Water Patrol, there's a substantial risk that the yacht could topple, thereby injuring or killing a bystander using the access and or spilling 200 gallons of fuel into Lake Minnetonka. Well, I've decided that I'm not going to sit here and pick these apart. I just want to present them to people. I do have a few issues with what's said in here because I don't think that everything's completely accurate that was said. Factual background. Hennepin County owns a public water access and is maintained by the county's Environment and Energy Department. Tony Bro, not sure how you pronounce it. Uh, he... he uh, I guess works here, and he's the one who they did an affidavit for all of for all of stuff. They, they, they rely on his affidavit for statements of fact. I guess. I said right there, staff member works primarily with Lake Minnetonka Hennepin County boat accesses. Learned that Paul Burquist and others were pulling the yacht owned by defendants onto the access on a trailer which was in, inadequate for the weight of the yacht which did not meet highway requirements to allow for transportation on any roads. Mr. Bro, sorry, learned that the yacht is a V-shaped hull design, which defendants were dangerously maneuvering onto a flatbed trailer. Further, in order to pull the yacht onto the trailer, defendants used cables which were inadequate for the weight of the yacht. In at least one cable breaking, recoiling, and thereby endangering bystanders who had gathered to watch a takeout. It was not a cable that broke, it was a strap. I mean, 
difference. Who knows how much. Affidavit of Lieutenant Brett Klein. The yacht remained in the access area adjacent to Lake Minnetonka, substantially blocking access by other citizens until about December 23rd when the defendants moved the yacht approximately 100 feet to another location on a slope of the access of the parking lot. The yacht has remained at the access since approximately December 15th on the flatbed trailer. Approximately 15 braces supported. Hennepin County has not granted defendants permission to keep the yacht at the access. The water patrol has repeatedly asked defendants to transport the yacht. Mr. Bro learned that the yacht had been operating in Lake Minnetonka for 25 years, used as charter boats, stored at the off-season. He learned that Tonka Bay Marina was unwilling and unable to continue to store the yacht. Defendant Berquist has attempted to make changes to the flatbed trailer, but both the Water Patrol and State Commercial Vehicle Inspectors have determined that there is nothing that can be done to the flatbed trailer to make it safe to transport the V-shaped hull, hull, H-U-L-L, uh, vessel. The state commercial vehicle inspector has noted that the trailer is in violation of state law and as it contains an unsafe load, which, uh, which situation is not correctably simply by modifying, correctable simply by modifying the flatbed trailer. Any attempt to modify the flatbed trailer would occur in the area of the lake access, potentially causing the operation support to collapse and crush anyone and anything underneath it. Pretty doom and gloom there. Both EED, the Environmental Department, and the Water Patrol believe the situation is very dangerous due to the V-shaped hull resting on a flatbed trailer, for which it was not designed, and on a sloped area of the parking lot with approximately 10 to 15 vessel support braces bending. Well, that's a little misleading, too. In addition, the owner of Tonka Bay Marina refused to store the yacht, in part out of concern that the hull of an older boat may have deteriorated, making continued storage potentially dangerous. In addition, on or about December 22nd, Defendant Berquist informed Water Patrol uh, that the yacht contains approximately 200 gallons of fuel. Well, there's, there's some value there. And the Water Patrol concerned if the yacht were to collapse, people could be injured or killing, and 200 gallons could flow into the lake. Uh, let's see. ED has attempted to mitigate danger by erecting 13 cement barriers around the yacht in order to help protect the public. One more time, I'm not here to pick this apart, but there's some issues that are not factually correct in there, and it sounds like a little bit of hysteria. Okay. Minnesota Rule of Civil Procedure 6502 authorizes the court to grant a temporary injunction. Minnesota law provides injunctive relief may be granted only if the moving party can demonstrate their pre-existing relationship between the parties, the harm that would result if the injunction were denied or issued, the public policy of granting or denying an injunction considering the facts, any administrative burdens in the judicial oversight and enforcement of the injunction, and the likelihood that one party or the other will prevail on the merits. Dahlberg, that, that's what they call Dahlberg when it comes to uh, injunctions in Minnesota. You've got to meet the, I think it's four steps. He's got five here. We'll, we'll see as we go. We got our legal ease. Okay. Uh, courts of equity will interfere by injunction to restrain acts amounting to a public nuisance if they affect public rights or privileges or endanger public health, regardless of whether such acts are denounced as crimes. Possible remedy, remedy under Minnesota statute section 56101 includes an injunction. So that was part one legal standard. Part two, plaintiff is entitled to a temporary injunction in joining defendants from continuing to store the yacht at the access. Plaintiff seeks an emergency temporary injunction that will enjoin defendants from continuing to store the dangerously situated yacht at the access and request the court order the defendants to immediately move the yacht to another location, thus restoring the access to its status quo condition prior to the moment defendants dangerously move the yacht onto the access, obstructing access access and endangering the public. As discussed below in detail, if this court does not intervene in immediately, it perpetuates and prolongs an extremely dangerous situation whereby the precariously positioned yacht may collapse and injure or kill one or more people and or pollute Lake Minnetonka with 200 gallons of diesel fuel. A lot of conjecture there, especially considering the yacht hasn't budged, even in all the high winds that have been going on. 
Pre-existing relationship to the parties. Now, remember that this is one factor. This factor favors the plaintiffs as there is no pre-existing relationship between plaintiff and defendant. Prior to 2021, defendants have never used the access for transporting the yacht from Lake Minnetonka and certainly have not stored the yacht at the access. There are no written or oral arguments between the parties along storage of the yacht, nor has plaintiff granted defendants permission in any manner to store the yacht at the access. Balance of harms. In evaluating this factor, the plaintiff must show irreparable harm to prevail on the motion, while defendant need only show substantial harm to thwart it. Now, there's a key. There's an important key. Plaintiff has to show irreparable harm. The defendant need only show sub substantial harm. I'd be thinking about that if I was Paul. For a harm to be irreparable, the injury must be of such nature that money alone could not suffice. A party makes a sufficient showing of irreparable harm where it will be left with no adequate remedy at law if the injunction is not granted. Another consideration in weighing the balance of harms is whether the defendant has already voluntarily taken remedial action. Balance of harm. Oh, we got a friend up here. Come on, kitty. Come on. Okay, everybody, I guess we're going to have a little bit of help. Come on, kitty. Let's get out of here. That's the fuzzball, Terry Kitty. He's coming down to help. Okay. When we're talking about one more time up here is substantial harm versus irreparable harm, there has been no substantial harm. I mean, the words dangerous and other things throw that out there. Pretty interesting. The balance in this case absolutely favors a plaintiff. I'm glad they threw that word absolutely in. Uh, as the balancing calculation is one of substantial danger. To, to the public as well as, as to Lake Minnetonka due to a potential collapse of the yacht versus the expertise or the expense to the defendant of safe, safely transporting the yacht to a storage area. If someone is seriously injured or dies, no, no damage is paid to the, to the county can undo those tragic outcomes. The damage is irreparable. Conversely, defendants' profoundly incompetent failure to carefully plan in advance for transportation of a storage of a vessel that is 58 feet in length and about 45 tons in weight has necessitated an expensive solution of defendant's own making. Defendants have kept the yacht at the access for more than a month without taking any action to safely and legally move the yacht to a new location in order to remedy the dangerous situation they created and thereby have perpetuated substantial dangers to the public and lake. So that's under the balance of harms. Public policy of granting or denying the injunction in light of the facts. Public policy. Interesting. If the court were to deny plaintiff's request to enjoin defendants from continual storage of the yacht at the access, the public as well as Lake Minnetonka would be gravely endangered by the yacht resting on the flatbed trailer, supported by approximately 15 braces, 10 of which are bent and located on a slope. Now here they say bent, and up there they say something else. And they should probably get their language straight. Uh, in addition, defendants benefit daily by avoiding storage costs, otherwise charged by a marina while obstructing public access to the lake. Avoiding storage costs. Interesting they threw that in there, because I, I don't think that that was the intent. Public interest overwhelmingly favors the plaintiff. You know, maybe, maybe not. Any administrative burdens in the, in the judicial oversight and enforcement of the injunction. Okay. Any administrator in the judicial sector. Injunctive relief in this matter would merely require the court to enjoin defendants from continuing to store the yacht at the access, necessitating the yacht's immediate removal from the access to another location with no court oversight needed unless defendants fail to abide by the order. So I'm not sure why that was in there. The likelihood that one party or the other will prevail on the merits. The party seeking an injunction must demonstrate that it's reasonably likely to su succeed in the underlying case. The likelihood of prevailing on the merits is one of the most important Dahlberg factors. Let's see. However, a court should need not make a final education on the issues raised in the complaint because neither issuing nor denying a temporary injunction is, de is a decision on the merits. So I guess what they're saying here is that issuing the injunction won't affect further lit litigation, but you can issue the injunction to protect whatever. I don't know how. 
In this case, plaintiff is seeking damages and injunctive relief in part under the civil nuisance statute, Minnesota statute 561.01, which provides as follows. And this we're going to examine more tomorrow because tomorrow we will go through the uh, other complaint. Anything which is injurious to health or indecent or offensive to the senses or an obstruction to the free use of property so as to interfere with the comfortable enjoyment of life of the property is a nuisance. Anything. An action. I'm sorry. That just This is so all-encompassing. It's almost silly. Talk about vague. An action may be brought by any person whose property is injuriously affected or whose personal enjoyment is lessened by the nuisance, and the judgment the nuisance may, may be enjoined or abated, as well as damages recovered. Now, that, that's really interesting because an action may be brought by any person whose property is injuriously affected or whose personal enjoyment is lessened by the nuisance. That's all a matter of opinion. Right there. So we've got a vague wording followed by a matter of opinion. Interesting, interesting. Uh, not the first vague ordinance I've run into in, in, in Minnesota or Orno or wherever. December 15th, defendants committed actions injurious to health and also indecent and offensive to the senses. No, I said I wasn't going to say anything. Nobody got hurt. So on December 15th, Nobody committed any actions that hurt anybody. I, I don't know why that would have been written. Because that's just, all you have to do is watch my videos to see nobody got hurt. And also indecent and offensive to the senses, the moment they pulled the yacht onto the access using a flatbed trailer not suitable for the V-shaped hull, again, not hull, of the yacht, thereby risking a collapse of the yacht and endangering numerous bystanders. In addition, the cables they used by defendants to pull the yacht onto the trailer at least on one occasion snapped and recoiled, further uh, endangering the bison. And I'll just say this again, it wasn't a cable, it was a tow strap. The nuisance continued as the yacht substantially obstructed the access to the landing for approximately eight days. The landing was unusable for eight days. The ice was too thin, nobody could go in or out, it was dangerous, so I'm not said I wasn't going to comment, but I'm sorry. Defendants moved the yacht a short distance to a new, new location on the sloped access parking lot where it continues to obstruct full use of the access as it occupies almost all of the parking space within that area of the lot and poses a threat to Lake Minnetonka if the yacht were to top them 200 gallons of fuel to spill. Most importantly, starting on December 15th and daily thereafter, defenders pe perpetuated an ongoing dangerous situation by leaving the yacht on the flatbed trailer on a slope supported by about 15 braces of approximately 10 of which are bent. Defendants' actions have created a nuisance, which has been ongoing since the day they moved the yacht onto the access landing and will continue every minute the yacht remains at the access, which appears to be for an extended time, as the defendants have refused uh, repeated demands by the county to move the yacht to a new location. I don't think that's right either. Uh, I know Dave's or Paul's wanted to move the boat, but it, and he very well could have moved the boat, but he's been trying to do it legally, from what I understand. Plaintiff can clearly demonstrate that its nuisance claim is supported by the fact, well, facts, not fact, the facts of the case and governing law such that it is likely to prevail. Okay. They say they can clearly demonstrate. Noted above, the defendant's unconscionable actions of towing the yacht onto the axis and leaving it in a slow parking lot on a flatbed trailer not suitable for transporting a vessel with a V-shaped hull, not hull, has created a very high risk to pedestrians and Lake Minnetonka. Further, defendant's refusal to move the yacht after repeated demands by the county for more than one month shows a tremendous indifference to the property rights of Hennepin County. Uh, and indifference isn't the right word either. Plaintiff is also seeking damages and injunctive relief under actions for common law trespass and ejection where plaintiff owns the access. Defendant Perquist brought the yacht to the access on December 15, 2021 and continues to store the yacht at the access despite repeated demands to move the yacht to a different location. Trespass is committed where a plaintiff has the right of possession to the land at issue and there's a wrongful and unlawful, uh, unlawful entry upon such possession. 
The elements of trespass are that a person goes on the land belonging to another person or causes some object or third person to go on the land. Stays on the land after he or she is supposed to leave. Does not remove something on the land that he or she has a duty to remove. An injunction is a possible remedy for trespass. Possible remedy for trespass. Con common law tort of ejection can be maintained only as a person in possession by one <coughs> against a person in possession by one having a present exclusive right to possession. Which I guess the county owns the uh, owns the ramp. Injunctive relief, injunction relief. I think it should be injunctive relief is appropriate for common law torts. Mm, let's get through this legally stuff. Plaintiff can clearly demonstrate the straight that its common law trespass and ejection claims are supported by the facts of the case and governing law, such as it is likely to prevail, and that defendants refuse to move their vessel from Hennepin County property despite repeated demands to remove the vessel. I mean, those statements are so loaded and slanted one way because... This whole complaint telling one side of the story, which which is nice, I guess, that Paul gets to get in front of a judge and tell his side. Okay, conclusion. The storage of the yacht at the access has created a nuisance by the ongoing threat to public safety as the yacht's V-shaped hull, should be hull, rests on a flatbed trailer on an access parking lot slope, uh, supported in part by braces that are buckling. Now, here we're saying buckling, and up there we were saying bent. Okay, well, which is it? Are they buckling or are they bent? I mean, th this should say bent. That's a little disingenuous. Defendants, actually, I'm going to say that's just not an accurate word at all. They are not buckling. If they were buckling, they, they would be falling over. Buckling is a verb. Okay, bent is more of a noun. Bent, bent fits. <coughs> Excuse me. Defendants have violated common law trespass and ejection by refuse to move the yacht from the access despite repeated requests by the county to defendants to move the yacht to another location. Defendants perpetuate the nuisance, trespass, and ejection violations by refusing to remove the yacht off of county property. As all, as all dog, Dalbert factors have been met, plaintiff requests an order enjoining defendants from further storing the yacht at the access and directing defendants to immediately and lawfully remove the yacht from the access in order to return the access to its status quo condition prior to the moment defendants created the nuisance onto it. So here they are looking for uh, the court to kick the boat off. And it's really interesting because I know that Paul for sure wants to move the boat off, but is being prevented from doing so. Quite, quite interesting. So there you have it. We just went through plaintiff's memorandum of law in support of the motion for a temporary injunction. Fourth Judicial Court, County of Hennepin, State of Minnesota, County of Hennepin versus Paul Burquist, Gen Benjamin Field Wilson, and Superior Dreams, LLC. There you have it, folks. Uh, join in tomorrow when I go through the... Uh, public nuisance, civil public nuisance uh, complaint, and then we can see what that reads. Turbine guy, signing off. Well, tell you what, here's what I'm going to do. Before I sign off, I'm going to look and see if I got any questions that came up during it. Oh, no, where am I live? There we go, live. Let's go. All right. No, they will have to prove damages or injury, but as a totalitarian dicks, the government will win. Bottom line, the dude needs to both move the boat ASAP. I'll show that one. What the heck? Denny says, please note that the C-note weighs about 56,000 pounds, not 50 tons. Yes, I have said that repeatedly in my videos. The only reason I keep using the word 50 tons is because that's how I started it. I'm trying to be consistent with the series in the series titling, but it has been well established when we have the discussion that it does not weigh 50 pounds. It weighs somewhere between 60 and 90,000 pounds. I know you've got 56,000, but I think the spec for this was 63,000, something like that. And then uh, 
and that doesn't include the double hull or the uh, diesel engine. So something more, and that's a dry weight. So once you add a couple hundred gallons of diesel, that's going to add some weight as well. So give yourself a little thumbs up. How's that? So anyone else got any more questions? Or else I'm going to sign off. Now I'll mention I did put in a request with the court to uh, attend the Zoom hearing as media, and that's been granted. So here we go. Randy Dill says, it sounds like they are smoking crack. Well, th this complaint seems pretty weak to me. I, I guess I'll give you the turbine guy take. Been involved in enough of this, and I've seen enough happen, and I do agree with the point that it really doesn't matter. The city and the judges work together. So you're going to have a problem overcoming what's here. But I saw I see this as a really weak complaint. They don't really point to any statutes that are being violated other than the public nuisance, and that's questionable and extremely vague. So, so th there's a lot of issues going on with that. Not, uh, why did they put the barricades up? Uh, I read through that. They said it in there. They, they did to maintain safety, to protect the public. They gave, they gave Paul three days' notice to move the boat, and when he didn't move the boat, they put the barricades up. And... The issue with that is now he can't move the boat if he, if he wants to, but getting permission to move the boat is the issue. And if no one will give him permission, he doesn't want to move it and do it illegally. So he's really kind of stuck in a uh, huge gray area uh, right now as to what's going to go on. And when I talked to Paul last, he said that he was, uh, I wouldn't say excited, but happy that this is coming to a head. And, and that he can get to court and explain his side, which is completely different. Like I said, I'm going to be monitoring it. Uh, I do not have permission to live stream it, which is too bad. But what I'm thinking of doing uh, is going to record it. And if they give me permission afterwards, uh, th then I can put the uh, whole court hearing up. So it's not up to me. It's up to the courts what's going to happen. If you guys are going to get to see it, I'm going to get to watch it so that I can... Uh, at least relay what I saw. If for some reason I can't live stream the uh, the, the proceeding, and I'd love to live stream it so everybody can see. I mean, I, I I don't know what else to say about that. All right, now don't forget about my sponsor, Bayside Marine over in Excelsior, Twin City Aerial, the drone guys. They've been helping me out, and Go Green Energy, my company, GoGreenEnergyOnline.com for renewable energy systems and products, DIY or I can help uh, put it in for you. Now, any other questions out there, I'm ready to answer them. And if you haven't hit the thumbs up, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button, please. And we will be back tomorrow. I think I'm going to run up to the boat and do a quick update, just to talk about the uh, the upcoming hearing that, that I'll be uh, watching it. All right, folks, no more questions. Turbine guy, going to sign off. Meow. Yeah. Poor kitty.